And if you have the feeling going through that you can use the body to bring the arms through, you'll stay underneath this no problem. So mm. without the golf ball, that pattern feels very easy. Yeah. As soon as you bring the golf ball into play, this terrifies people. All right, mate, so let's talk about hand path, especially through the ball. We often hear a lot of players, especially good players, they kind of talk about exiting left, but we see a lot of players end up just pulling that handle right, really in and close to their body. Now, down on the ground here, we've got a black reference line, right? And we're gonna talk about how the hands should work through impact relative to what we see with a professional. And let's clear up some misconceptions about swinging down the line right. and is the golf swing a straight back, straight through or an arcing motion? Yes. So what would you say to that in regards to what does a professional golfer do with their hand path from the moment of impact? Where do they go from here? So the hands are going to continue to travel on that circular motion that they worked on from the top down. Mm -hmm. So they are going to be working in the direction of the golf ball and before they make it to the golf ball, they're gonna start working back up and in as the body continues to rotate and extend. Yeah, perfect. So I think the key word that you use there is the body, Yes. right? I wasn't setting up over the golf ball going, let's make a circular event with our golf swing by pulling the arms back and then trying to then pull them through because before we know it, we haven't really used the body at all. Yes. And as a very simple reference, if I was to stand up with the golf club out in front of my chest, pivot back, so now I'm facing in this direction and turn down, well straight away, if you look at what my hand path has done, it hasn't stayed on that line at all, right? The arms have moved at an effect to the movement of the body. And then on this way through, if I stand up here, my chest is facing back, turn in this direction and then down, it very much is a rounded motion created with the body rather than trying to manipulate it too much with the hands. Yes. Yeah, great. So kind of talk me through, we said that at the moment of impact, the hand path was actually working slightly left at the moment of impact and not at the ball, not at where it started. Why is that so? If we, I think a lot of people end up thinking of the golf ball as the finish line. Yeah. You know, and you know, if, if it were, if it were, we, we'd always want, again, if the body is generating the speed, mm -hmm. the hands are going to beat the club head to that finish line. And the path that they are going to be moving on as the body pulls them through is going to be more of an up and in motion. That's just the continuation of that circular pattern that we've moved on from the start. Yeah, absolutely. So let's say a player, uh, they video the swing or they're, they're working on this element of their golf swing and assume the sequence of their swing is okay because we see a lot of players, they might have very funky hand parts like they get thrown out to the right simply because their arms are too deep behind the rotation of the body. But assuming that within reason, they're in an okay position here, but then all of a sudden, I'm a player who thinks that I need to kind of keep exiting left because I've seen a tour pro do that. What yeah. would you say to them? Typically speaking, when we see players trying to do that movement only with their arms, we're also gonna see a big buckling, loss yeah. of structure within that lead elbow. Mm -hmm. And when we see a breakdown in structure, we're always gonna see a breakdown at impact or a loss of club face control. Mm. Okay, so at that point, I think they're, they're getting that concept a little bit skewed learning to create the motion from the speed of the body. Again, the key being learning how to rotate and extend. Yeah. The body is going to pull the arms through. Correct. And just learning what that feels like, we start understanding the natural path the hands need to be able to follow through on. It doesn't need to be one that's manipulated. Yeah, and I think this is, this is very, very similar to a lot of the other videos that we've done. It's talking about how really at the end of the day, the body is the engine and the main facilitator of movement of those arms. The more that we utilize our ability to shift our pressure into the ground, then that facilitates the rotation. I haven't had any conscious thought of what my arms are doing. And you can see that they've moved into a position where they've moved around my body and they've got exactly. depth. Exactly. Now, if I do that in the downswing, now all of a sudden, the lead hip clears out the way and my hands have transported into a position where they would be relatively 
arcing around, and if I had a golf club in my hands, that would be very similar to what you see with the professional. Correct. Great. If we were holding on to a heavy stone, okay, a med ball as an example, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have the ability to do all of those funky things with elbows and wrists. Yeah. It's going to be more, people might think of it as momentum, but the body's creating that energy, and we're going to be holding on to that heavy object. So the hands will move in that path of least resistance. Yeah. And that would be that continuation of that up and in motion. Let's talk about a functional drill that players can use as a takeaway. From now this understanding, instead of trying to exit left and manipulate that with the hands and drive it down the target line, because we do see some players yeah. trying to do that, how does a player then just get a feel when they're hitting golf balls? We know that we've got a bit of a movement pattern exercise here. They can work on the range or in the gym, but let's say they want to clip a few down there. Yep. What would you use as kind of a reference? Is there any sort of uh, training aid or through the, through the ball, some visual reference that you would use for the hands and where they should be? Absolutely. So if you just go into your setup, having the reference point of a golf club positioned basically parallel to that shaft angle, your lie angle. Yeah. If I place this above that, yeah. and if you have the feeling going through that you can use the body to bring the arms through, you'll stay underneath this no problem. So mm. without the golf ball, that pattern feels very easy. Yeah. As soon as you bring the golf ball into play, this terrifies people. Yeah. So I, I would get them to start with very simple motions, much shorter than normal, but learning to feel like, again, we're using the body to create that energy. And if we do that, there will be no issue with you being able to travel underneath this. And let's just talk about the importance of me actually hitting the ground there on that one, because yep. otherwise, if we were to set up that alignment stick like you just showed there, and then we get players that we tend to see they do about 50% of the actual, um, the proper functionality of a lot of drills, they go, okay, miss that stick. Then all of a sudden their practice rehearsal looks like this. Exactly. They're lifting up and out, the arms move around, then they hit the ball and they top it and they wonder why. It was like, you just rehearsed topping. Yes. <laughs> so I chuck that club back into that position. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the feeling that the body is leading the arms without trying to actually force myself to go underneath. So shift, rotate, movement through, clip the ground that feels great let's do that again now at that point in the finish one piece of feedback i might tell players is just notice how you feel your arms are working in connection through the armpits yeah okay with players the player who might struggle with the arms coming off the body and the hands moving too far away from them through the strike hmm. that player really needs to become more aware of what it feels like to keep that arm to rib cage connection so that's likely a unique feeling to them yeah yeah and I would say a great little um, reference for that would be you could chuck a couple of T's underneath your armpits here, guys. And then when you set up, if Riggs, you chuck that club back in position after I've had those practice swings, I'll hit a little one down there and we'll stop in the finish. Now, that sensation of getting the body leading the arms and the club, and if I stop, you can see that my arms, without manipulating them at all, and I get back into my front bend, at no stage have Correct. they rolled yes. or moved or separated or bunched off the body. Exactly. Anything else you'd add there? With that pattern? Hmm. I really like the idea of being able to combine something like that with an arm connection tool. So whether that's a towel or tease underneath the armpits, yeah. another one of my favorites is using that smart ball. So a ball between the forearms, it's yeah. a great way to feel that. Yeah, love it. So I'm gonna do a couple more practice swings and then we'll hit a full shot down there, but I'm gonna bring real awareness for myself, really thinking all about how that feels like the body is leading the club and I'm not trying to force the handle or that movement in any way, that feels great. All right, let's hit one there. You know what, felt flush and definitely through the ball, that connection of the arms on the upper body, great stuff. Love it.